Hello. Hello. Hey, look, Adia, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? Not too bad myself. How's your uh, weather there? Cold. Cold, really? How much is it? Sorry? Or how much is it? How cold is it? <laughs> is, is it like uh, my in uh, the minus figures or? Really? Yeah, because cause like here, yeah, even though it's uh, in Canada, in uh, the place I'm living in, even though if it's May, it's still minus five right now. <laughs> it's so pretty what, terrible. What season are you in? Uh, well, I live in Winnipeg, and it's kind of a spring season right now, but it's still minus five, minus. which is awkward. <laughs> but oh yeah. my god. What's your summer? Uh, summer temperature is maximum like uh, 30 degrees. But, uh, really? Yeah, that's max. But uh, I'm still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> okay, oh anyway. I'll get started with uh, getting some details from you. So again, Locadia or Locadia? Locadia. Locadia, okay. Locadia's profile. Okay, Locadia, so first of all, we are preparing for IELTS general or academic? Academic. Academic, okay. And your requirement was what, 6.5 or 7? It's 7. 7, okay. Uh, overall or in each one? Sorry? Is it overall or in each one? Each one is to be 7, yeah. Yeah, okay. And look at yeah, am I on speakers? Because as soon as I talk, I can hear myself. Like, is it possible to get a headphone? Oh, should I, you want me to put headphones in? Yeah, please, because uh, I can hear myself right now, so it's kind of weird. All right. Yeah, Okay, I think I can hear you much better. Yeah, I think okay. the problem is solved now. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, uh, so I was just getting some details. IELTS Academics, seven in each. And uh, what is your deadline? Um, I don't have a deadline. It's just when I pass, that's when I need to write, um, to start applying. I want to go to Australia. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, I teach, uh, we teach Austra in Australia as well, by the way. So even if you need any help there, which you won't, of course. But anyway, you can tell people about us there. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, have you given IELTS before? Or is it going to be your first time? No, I've done it before. Okay, and what did you score at that time? Um, I scored um, six listening. Six listening, okay. Reading, 5.5. 5.5, okay. Writing, six. Writing six, okay. Speaking eight. Speaking eight, wow, okay. Speaking eight, yeah, it looks like it because your speaking is pretty good. <laughs> All right, let me see. Okay, and um, uh, did, 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 what did you study at that time? Did you study from Cambridge books or just, you know, uh, online? To be honest, I didn't study for anything. I just went and wrote it. Oh, okay, okay, didn't study. Okay, so it looks like your major help uh, that you need is basically in everything except for uh, speaking. Now, here's how IELTS works. IELTS is v uh, very easy to um, to improve. For example, going from 
5 to 5.5 to 6 to 6.5. All these 0.5s are very easy. But as soon as you start going from 6.5 to 7, it becomes really difficult. And then 7 to 7.5, much more difficult. So it's almost like it's a different level. And uh, based on that, I think from where we are right now, it should at least, at least, take you one and a half months to get ready. Uh, I want to say two months, because technically, all professional institutes will tell you that it takes one month to improve by 0.5 band. One month to improve by 0.5. So that means it should take you two months. But... I believe in my course. I know that we have some really good templates that I can show you. Uh, and once you look at them, you should be okay in one and a half months. Now, we will discuss all that at the end of the class. We will discuss your schedule and the hours. But my recommendation would be to go with three, four classes uh, a week and uh, go for six weeks, basically. Okay. Okay, you understand my point? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to send you some emails. We're going to start, first of all, with some writing practice. Then I'm going to show you a little bit of reading, how we do it. Listening, we cannot do in the one hour we have today. Uh, but then after that, we'll do some speaking as well. So I'll try to show you a little bit of everything so you understand how our classes work. And uh, yeah, I'm going to start with writing. Hold on a second. Open up my email. Okay, so I had your Gumtree uh, email address. What is your actual email address? If you can type it on Skype, I can send you the email there. How do I...? <laughs> well, you would have on your top right-hand side, you would have a little white cloud. If you click on that white cloud on the top okay, right... Okay, I can I've seen it. as well? Yeah. Okay. I've sent you an email. Let me know once you receive it. Ah, uh, you got something? No, I haven't yet. I haven't? Okay. Um, mm. Do you want to refresh? Yeah, refresh. Oh, okay. Must be on way. I'll send it again just in case. Okay. Yeah, I've received it. Perfect, okay. Uh, here you will open up this uh, attachment that has a lot of essay topics. Let's have a look. Okay, can you see all those questions? Still opening. Okay, okay. Yes, I can see them. These are the best topics that you can look for for the IELTS exam. A lot of them are from the previous exams. And why I'm telling you this is because if they are from the previous exams, and if you practice on them, then there's a very good chance that it will come in the next exam again. 
So, okay. highly useful content here, and uh, why I give this to people is for two reasons. One reason is for all of our classes and for all the weeks you study, you can use any one of these questions, any two questions, ten questions per day, and write on that. That is your homework to do writing. Uh, I don't give reading, speaking, or listening homework because writing is one thing that takes 40 minutes or 20 minutes to write. And if you're at home, that's the best time to do it. Like in the class, we shouldn't do it because it's, it's going to just take up time. So that's one reason for homework, that this attachment is useful. And the other reason it's useful is to see what kind of topics come in the exam. For example... If you look at question number two about animals, it says blood sports, right? Mm. Okay. Do you know what blood sports are? Or right, what blood sports is? No. Okay. Um, any guesses at all? I would think that's like boxing or something. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's kind of like fighting. Of course, it's blood sports. It yeah. has to be a sport where we uh, beat each other up. Uh, it's not with humans, actually. It's with animals. So blood okay. sports are some things where animals, uh, mostly in poor countries, uh, have like uh, chicken fights or dog fights. And uh, okay. people people gather around to watch it and they see animals kill each other. Mm. Uh, in Spain, there is bullfighting still. So all, all these things are examples of blood sports. And of course, it's a wrong thing to do. That is the question here. They're asking you, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Okay. So now that's blood sports. I'll give you another question. For example, if you go to the very end of the attachment, last page, you will see genetic engineering. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what genetic engineering is? Not really. Yeah, right, right. Now, genetic engineering is... Um, do you watch... Uh, do you follow the Kardashians? Do you watch Kim Kardashian and that stuff? No, I just like read them in the magazine, but I never watch them. <laughs> okay, okay. Like I, I hate watching them and, and stuff, and I hate discussing them. Yeah. As well. But, uh, but the, the, it's a good example to put. Their father, uh, Kim Kardashian's father, was a man, and he became a woman. And uh, people who do this stuff, you know, who change their gender, that is an example of genetic engineering. Really. Mm-hmm. That All is right. one example. Yeah, that's one example. Then genetic engineering is used with animals. For example, nowadays the world's population is increasing, the animal population is decreasing. So people are putting medicines into animals to produce more animals. That's genetic engineering. Okay. Sometimes they use it on fruits to produce more fruits or produce bigger fruits. That's genetic engineering. Uh, mm -hmm. So all those examples are of genetic engineering. Now, if you don't know what this means, then in the exam you wouldn't be able to write on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is why every topic in this attachment, you should research on that a little bit. You don't, you don't need facts or news items, you just need to know what it means, so you can write on it. Okay. Beautiful, okay. So that is for, uh, you can you know research today, tomorrow, whatever. I'm now going to send you a similar uh, attachment for task one. That's even better. Hold on a sec. Let me uh, go ahead and tell you how task one and task two work because, as you told me, you didn't prepare much for it. So right now I just showed you task two, and I'm writing this down on Skype. Task two is essay topics, and uh, these uh, here you have to spend 40 minutes. You have to write a minimum of 250 words. Okay. That's how task two works and uh, minimum requirement as I said is 250 words but preferred requirement is 260 words okay any questions here no okay. then we have task one that I'm about to show you now task one is a bunch of graphs do you remember doing a graph in your yeah yeah, yeah I did yeah perfect okay so that's task one, and here you're supposed to spend 20 minutes on it. Uh, minimum 150 words is required, so less time, less words. But uh, preferred is 160 words. Okay. Now what happens in the exam is you don't get 
20 minutes and then just the task one page and then 40 minutes and task two page you get one whole hour and both questions together so if you want you can spend 30 minutes on task one and 30 minutes on task two it's your decision but mm -hmm. it wouldn't make sense because task one is short you should spend less time on it as i said as i wrote over there and uh yeah that's how that works any questions so far yeah okay uh, so, uh, in your exam, which one was easier for you, task one or task two? It was task one. Task one was easier? It was difficult. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. What? yeah. Because um, they gave us, like, a, it was, like, direction. Oh, so, it's a map, okay. Yeah. So, I'm not good with things like that. Mm -hmm. So you just so I think I spent more time there mm -hmm. because I just couldn't you know I'm not very good directions and stuff so it just it, it was difficult for me. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The map uh, is not a common question, by the way. You are one of the few people who got it probably. Uh, but again, there is in task one six types of questions: map, process, table, and and a lot of things. So um, that's what takes a lot of time in. Um, IELTS writing academic because what's going to happen is after <clears throat> after this class when we officially get started then in the first two classes we need to discuss just writing we'll be discussing task 2 which has four different structures and then we'll discuss task 1 which has six different structures so it's going to take like four hours uh, but after that we don't discuss writing anymore after our first two classes I just give you the writing homework and then you write, and then I just check in the class. Then, uh, other than checking your writing, we do reading, listening, and speaking mostly in classes. Okay. Yep, great, okay. Uh, and it doesn't matter uh, if the task one is going bad. I mean, of course it matters, but uh, what you should know is 33% marks are given to task one, and 67% marks are given to task two. Okay. So task two is always more important. Uh, and yeah, I'll send you another email. It says uh, task one writing academic. Yeah, what is? Okay. This one has all the graphs. Can no, sorry, it's, ta it's still the old one, the task two. Oh, I, yeah, I sent you that email again for task so, two. Yeah, 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 so I haven't received task one. Uh, okay, you haven't received task one yet? No. Okay, Okay, we'll wait for a while, because um, last time it took some time. Yeah. Um, let me see something, actually. Oh, you have Hotmail, right? That's the problem. <laughs> Hotmail <laughs> is actually very slow with attachments. Um, if, really? Yeah, yeah, I see it all the time with my students. So um, that, that's okay. I mean, we can always do it like this. Or for our classes, you can make a separate Gmail account. Gmail is very fast. I've got a Gmail account. Okay. Do but you, it's yeah. it's linked to my um, Hotmail. So that's, I don't know. Okay. But it's so like uh, if you get an email on Gmail, you'll get it there. And, and you will get it in Hotmail as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, so you can see so, it on Gmail as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I haven't received even on Gmail. You haven't received on Gmail either? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to give me your Gmail account? I'll try to send it directly on Gmail. Uh, yeah. All right, let me see what's my Gmail mm -hmm. account. So, let me type it.
Okay, so I've sent it now. Let's see how fast this is. Yes, it's arrived. See, oh, I gee. told you. <laughs> yeah, it's much faster. Great. So let's open up that attachment. Yeah, of course it is. Okay. Uh, in this attachment, you can see some graphs, right? Yes. Okay. The graphs have model answers as well. These answers are just okay. They're not great answers uh, because they're written by students. But for every question, you have an answer that can give you some idea of how to answer these questions. And this is, again, a very good attachment. I know that some of these questions have appeared in the exam. I don't know about many questions, but some of them. Now, uh, why I like this one is this is very hard. Like, the questions here are very difficult. And in the exam, the questions are like this too. They're all difficult. If you ever go online or you buy any IELTS book, you will see that task one questions they give are very easy. And when you go to, go to the exam, you find something very hard. So I start yeah. with the hard part so we never, don't have to, you know, change for the exam. So that could be a good task one practice, you know, whenever you're free. Again, you write on task one. Yeah, that's, that's for that. I'm now going to uh, send you an IELTS exam write sheet. The same sheet that you get in the exam to write stuff on. I'll tell you why I'm saying Give me one sec. So, which city are you exactly in from? Zimbabwe. Oh, Zimbabwe. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I was asking about uh, UK. Oh, sorry. No <laughs> uh, Leeds. Uh, oh, Leeds, Leeds. Okay, okay, nice. nice. Yeah. One of my really good friends is in, is in uh, Leeds. That's cool. That's cool. So, how, how did you advert? Come on, um, Leeds, then Gumtree. Oh, we do it everywhere. We do it. Uh, we do, uh, do the service in Canada, uh, UK, Australia. Uh, nowadays, we're expanding slowly and gradually in China as well. So we offer the service in UK. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. You got my email? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Sheet. Let's open that up. Yeah. This sheet, does this look familiar to you? Yeah. Yeah, this is the one you give your exam on, right? Yeah. Beautiful, okay. So this is a good practice sheet. If you have a printer at home, you can print yeah. out a bunch of these copies and write on this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you the real exam feeling because, you know, we all practice. And then we... Yeah go in the exam, we see a different sheet, and then people get confused. So it's better to practice on the exact exam sheet. Uh, but again, I don't want you to have a lot of printing costs. So a, little, a few here and there would help. You don't need to print hundreds of these. But the most important thing for this one is how these sheets are going to help you manage your words. So. Now that I told you that in task two, we need to do 260 words. Mm. How does the examiner count it, or how should you count it? Well, of course, you guys are not going to count every single word. One, two, three, you're not going to go like that. It's going to take forever. Mm. Yeah, so what needs to be done is we use a formula. And the formula, I'm going to write it here. So it is the average of the first three lines multiplied by the number of lines. Okay. So, yeah, you take an average of the first three lines. Let's say the first three lines you write 30 words, and the average is 10 words per line then. Then you will multiply it by, let's say if you have 26 lines. So that becomes 10 multiplied by 26. And that ends up at 260 words. Okay. Yeah. So everybody has a different average. It's not always 10. You know, once you count your your uh, first three lines, maybe your average is, let's say, 24, for example. So mm. you're going to do 24 divided by 3. 
that is going to be 8. So now you know that for task 2 you need to do 260 words. So you divide 260 by 8. Does it come down to 260 divided by 8? And you're going to get 32.5 lines. These are the number of lines you have to write. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, you would have a different average, but just use that formula, and then you would need, uh, then you would know how many lines to write. So so far so clear. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. So now that you know that you have to write 32, 33 lines, so you count. Okay. 33 lines. One, two, three, four, five. You're gonna count to line number 33. Okay. At that point, you'll just mark it that, okay, this is the place I have to finish. You just mark it, and then you start writing. Now you can write peacefully. You don't need to keep counting every time. You just look at the line where you're supposed to finish and try to finish before that. That's it. You keep doing that every time, and you would get a much better idea about where the line finishes each time. Then in the exam, you would be so confident that you wouldn't even need to count the 33 lines or use the formula. You would have a natural idea of where the line goes, where you have to mark it. So you'll just okay. go in the exam, you'll just mark it, and you'll know, okay, I have to finish here. So you'll become much better at, uh, at the word thing there. Okay. Great. Because uh, the examiner only allows, um, uh, let's say, a range of 20 words. For example, if you're supposed to do 250 words in task 2, you can do 250 to 270. If you can do, if, if you're supposed to do 150 words in task 1, you can do only 150 to 170. You cannot do more or less. You can technically do more, but if it's really good, like if your writing is really good, the examiner won't say anything. However, even if your writing is good, and let's say you do 300 words, then you will get a penalty, because of course there is a limit. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So with that done, I'll send you my favorite book in IELTS now. Uh, I'll tell you why it's my favorite in a second. Do you guys, uh, like in Zimbabwe, what, what do you guys... Uh, f Sorry, say that again. Like in Zimbabwe, what's your favorite sport? Like what does the country really get interested in? I think it's football. Football? Not cricket? No, I think I, I think cricket, as I was growing up, I just I didn't know anything about cricket. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I knew about football. So oh. I think it's football. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, then that, that makes sense. Cricket. Mm -hmm. Cricket is for posh people, I think. Oh, yeah, for, for, no, not for that, but it's just like some countries, you know, some Asian countries, it's really popular there. Um, but, because uh, I used to follow cricket when I grew up, and there was always a Zimbabwe cricket team, and whenever teams used to go to Zimbabwe, there was a big crowd, like always there was a big crowd. So I thought maybe, you know, people there really enjoy cricket. But maybe, no. maybe it's just a few people there. Yeah, I think it's for more posh people, because like when I grew up, I did, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about cricket in Zimbabwe. Okay. I knew more about football. So I think, yeah, it's more for well-out people. Okay, okay, I see. Interesting. Okay, cool. I've sent you another email that says IELTS book. Uh, it's a big book, so it'll take some time to download. Yeah, this is really fast. Yeah. It's a right to read. Yes. <laughs> I was right. Is right. that? Yeah, yeah, that one. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. Did you open it up? Yeah. Okay, great. This book was written by some really talented Vietnamese people. Uh, they really made a very good book here. So what, what you'll see here in page 3 is frequently asked questions. Page three, I think I passed it. Yeah. Okay. 
These questions are questions that people like you and me have asked the examiners, and uh, the, the examiners have responded with questions like, how much should I write, what should I avoid, what should I use in my writing, etc., etc. So a lot of details there. It's a very good material to use and practice uh, when you're free. Uh, and then you will see page 6. In page 6, it's, it'll say IELTS writing task 1. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> there are four points at the bottom of this page. The first point is task achievement. Can you see that? Yes. Task achievement, then coherence and cohesion, and then the two other things. So these are the four things which you are marked on. If you can do good in each one, you get a 2.25 band for each one. So let's see what these things are. First one, task achievement, means how clearly have you answered the question to the point. Coherence and cohesion means the structure, the, the structure you have done. Lexical resource is the vocabulary you have used. Grammatical range and accuracy is the grammar you have used. And these are the four main things. So for the second one, coherence and cohesion, the structure, we're going to be discussing that in our first two classes when we officially start. Because as I said, like IELTS is the most complicated exam that I have. I do many other exams. I do like 10 exams. But IELTS has the, the most structures there. So it's going to take us two classes to discuss the second part, coherence and cohesion for writing. Then, lexical resource number three, which is basically your vocabulary. You can practice that from this book. Like, I'll show you how this book works, because this book is the best practice for vocabulary. After that, task achievement, number one, and grammar, number four. I'll only see if you're doing good on this or not once you do your homework. Then I'll assess you and see, okay, you're doing good or not good. Any questions here? Um. No, I don't have a question. I just want to add that I think number two is one of my weaknesses. Weakness, yeah. I think, yeah. Okay. And the good news is number two will only take you four hours to improve. <laughs> because as I said, like the first four hours of classes, we discuss number two. And it's you have to memorize it, practice it. That's all. It's very easy. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, after that, you will see a couple of tables on the next few pages. You can just ignore all of that. And let's okay. now go to page 25. Line graph. Line graph. You can see there's a line graph here. And then on the next page, you will see a model answer of band 5. Yes. So if you write like this like this guy here, you can score band 5. That's just an example. But you want to mm. score band 7. So if you go on the next page, you will see a band 7 answer for the same thing. Okay. Okay, so this thing will first of all show you the difference between a band 5 and a band 7 level. You will automatically realize that, okay, there's a difference in vocabulary, grammar, the way it's said, and all those things. Uh, afterward, on the next page, you will see model sentence structures. Mm -hmm. These uh, structures, or sorry, these sentences are also going to tell you the same thing. How an IELTS 5 person writes it, how an IELTS 6 person writes it, and how an IELTS 7 person writes it with each sentence, with each sentence that was mentioned in the model answer. So it analyzes each sentence individually, which is the best part of it. So you get more in-depth analysis. For example, let's see IELTS 7 plus. Can you see that first sentence there? Yes. It says a glance at the graph provided reveals some whatever, whatever. Do you know what a glance means? Yes. Okay. Now, see, my students look at this and they, they are like, okay, this thing, a glance at the graph provided, is something we can uh, use with every writing. So they use it in each task one. Like once we have more time, I'll show you the work of some of my students. Like everybody is using this line. And you can use this too. Like you can just have, you just have to memorize it and then use it. 
That's the whole okay. point of this book. You read these things, whatever you like, memorize it, and then use it in your writing uh, to get you to the next level. And after this, you will see on page 29 the academic vocabulary. Yes. Basic, intermediate, and advanced. So you want to be at the advanced level, obviously. Uh, the good thing about this vocabulary practice is that it's not like a word list. You know, a lot of instructors in a lot of programs, what they do is they give students a thousand page word list and they say, here, memorize this. And nobody does that. Like I used to try it earlier when I started teaching, I used to do the same thing, but none of my students memorized it because it's boring. Right? Yeah. But if you have this word list, you have all the words that are relevant to the graph and that are relevant to IELTS. That's why people study this and they memorize this much better. Okay? Yes. Uh, so that's for you to do as well. How is your grammar, Lokadia? I think my grammar is all right. I think, yeah, I think my grammar is all right. I, okay. I'm good. I'm good with my grammar. Okay. It's just like try to get things to be organized, I think. Okay, got you. Okay, so uh, I was asking that because if you see page 30, test your comprehension. Yeah, yeah I think I'm all right in this. It's just yeah. tr try to organize my work. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, because this thing afterward is just grammar practice. So if you think you're good, then you don't need to do this. It's not very, uh, it's not highly useful for people who have good grammar. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So, so now you will see more questions later and more samples just like this. <clears throat> I'm gonna write down this on uh, write this down on Skype, and uh, you can copy this on your paper as well. I'm gonna say up to page 105. It's task one, up to page 105, and from page 105 to 185, it's task two. Yes. Okay. Do you like this book? Yeah, I think I like it, yeah. Because yeah, it's not, not the same as the other books I've been looking at. It's really good. Exactly, exactly. This is uh, this is just an IELTS book, but I send it to people who are doing other exams. Like I send it to people who are doing SAT or who are doing TOEFL. Because uh, everybody can use it. It's highly useful. Great, great, great. Okay, so you, that's for you to do as well. You can look at it whenever you're free. Uh, it's it's very hard to write, right? Like, you know, when people are sitting down for writing, it's very hard to sit down and be like, okay, 40 minutes, I'm going to sit here and write. Correct? Yes. Yeah, it's very difficult to practice. So that's why this book is useful. You know, you're lying down, you're in a bus or whatever. You can just open this up and practice this. By the way, why didn't you practice for your last exam? Did you not have time or just didn't want to? Um... Uh, that's the reason why I'm doing this lesson because oh, you're I just okay. <laughs> I just like could not be bothered to just sit and concentrate and uh -huh. just practice. I I just didn't have the time. So um, that's why I thought this time I think if I do a lesson I think I might be pushed. Like if you give me homework then I I be like forced to do it. But if I'm doing it on my own I'm just I'm lazy. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah. So I need to push you, I need to be strict on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm lazy, that's all. Okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, one of my students, he was from India, he um, he just took the course and he never studied anything from me. Like, he never uh, did any structures. I, I was like, okay, let's do this practice or let's practice. He's like, no, Sean, I know everything. I, I researched a lot. He, he was researching for one year. So he knew how all the strategies work. Uh, and he was just taking two hours each day and he just wanted me to be there so I can tell him okay write on this read this listen to this that's all we were doing and he found it extremely useful because I was telling him to do it because he yeah. couldn't do it himself yeah I know that that's the same with me I'm just I just like don't have the motivation I know I want to pass it but I for me to sit down and say let me do it that's the motivation I need Okay, okay. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right, thanks for telling me that. That's helpful. Uh, great. I've sent you one more email right now for reading. <clears throat> mm 
Yeah, I've got it. You can see a big, re big reading attachment there as well. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go down here to uh, to page number three. Uh, it should say test one. Yes. Okay. You can see the list of headings there, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So uh, there's a list of headings, which means uh, in these questions, you need to give headings or give titles to each paragraph in the passage. You will see the passage later in the next page. Yes, I can see it here. Perfect. So for paragraph A, you need to give a heading. For paragraph B, you need to give a heading. There is a strategy for all these questions. The strategy for the list of heading questions is that all you have to do to figure out the main idea of each paragraph is to read the first line of each paragraph. For example, I'll show you. Paragraph A, it says the 16th and 17th, right? Yes. Okay. The 16th and 17th centuries saw two great pioneers of modern science. All right. We'll just stop here. Saw two great pioneers of modern science. Let's go back to the list of headings on page 3. And the answer here is going to be number five. Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, pioneers of early science. Very, very simple, like first sentence and you find the mm. answer. Then, for example, let's say we try to find for paragraph D. Paragraph D says, Gilbert was first interested in chemistry, but later changed his <laughs> read up to up to this point. And if you go back up in the headings, the answer is the last one. Okay. Yeah. See how it works? Like, first line and there's the answer. All right. Yeah. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that we should avoid reading the whole paragraph. We should still read it just to make sure because it's not always this easy. Uh, but this is just one of the strategies. This is just one of the things that will help you push yourself far, uh, faster. And uh, okay. even if you you know, read the whole paragraph, your focus should always be the first line because that mostly gives you the answer. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there is that and there is more. Uh, what I do always in reading is I do this. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you a few questions. I'll do some myself and uh, show you these strategies and details. Then I give you some time to do it. And I don't do it like other teachers. I don't say, okay, here are the 40 questions. Go do it. I'll see you in one hour. I don't do that because I know you're paying me hourly and I need to be here to do something. So what I do is I do three or four questions with you only, or five or six maximum at one time, uh, to see how you use my strategies. And after that, I also have to see what kind of mistakes you make. Uh, during this class time, once you do it, I see, I see how you're moving in between the pages. I see how long you take on each question and what confusions you have. And then I can guide you better on you know whatever you need to do. Okay. So that's how our reading classes work. Any questions so far on that? No. Good. The best thing about this, I haven't shown you the best part yet. Let's go to the top, to the first page. Yes. You'll see all these different tests and all the different dates, right? Yes. Yeah. These are the dates <coughs> that have been compiled up to 2011. And you can see that each passage has come multiple times before 2011. Like it's between 2007 and 2011. And these are the dates when these passages appeared in the exams. Okay. Yeah. That's why it's highly useful. Now, now in each place, the exam is kind of different. For example, in Canada, it's different.